All right, so I'm just going to quickly go over, even if you got this, totally understand this, review it all together. Um, and I'm re recording this, and I'll put this on YouTube. So in any one of these true-false questions, if uh, when you get them, it's like, oh, man, true-false questions. They're horrible because you first have to determine if it's true or false. You have to get some kind of idea. And if you're wrong, it could take some time to get through them. Usually on our comps, we have like 10 of them. They're openers. Ugh, good. Stressful. But um, so the first step is, I think everybody did it here. You want to look up the definitions. That's always going to be the first step for anything. And that's why I asked you to make those brown bombers and use them in that way um, so that you have it sitting in front of you. Um, so the definition I used is this one. You could have used the one that Robin used. You're going to end up in the same place. Let's see. So this is not a PowerPoint, so I can't just slide down it. Um, so the first step is you have to believe if it's true or not. So you'll want to mess around a little bit and see if it's true and get a feeling. You have to make a guess. This is where it could go wrong because if you believe that something's true and it's not, you're going to be trying to prove it. And if you believe that something's false and it's not, you're going to be hunting for a counterexample. And the worst is if you prove something that's not true. That would be bad. But that can send you for a spin. So um, you know, give yourself some time for those true-false questions that you have on, you know, just so that you have the exploration time. Um, but then uh, I use, uh, so you're asking about how to write it. Some people write more prose. Like this is what I consider more prose, where they're writing words around what they're saying. Some people like to see it documented on the side. I think Colonel Watts is that kind of person. She likes to see this is what I'm saying, and right next to it, this is why I did it. And this is what I'm saying, and this is why I did it. Um, I used arrows from the first day I kind of figured out how to write proofs because um, I'm an editor. So I like to slap something up there and then edit my work as I go. And so you can see that that's the style I've adopted for my proofs. Um, so I kind of have the strategy. So I, I think you guys had the whole strategy down. That's the strategy. And then I start putting arrows so I don't have to rewrite it. <laughs> that's, how, that's why I'm doing that. It doesn't mean you should do as I do. Like I, when we were in foundations once, we wrote a proof after everyone had mastered a certain type of proof. And then everybody looked around the room and saw, wow, everyone's style is different. Um, one person had written all the prose at the front and then had his math down below. They explained what was going on and say, and as it follows below, everything was underneath it. So everybody was different. It was really neat. So um, you see me documenting, though. The documentation's there. Um, you have every one of these theorems I'm using. I'm citing them. I even tell you what property I'm using from that theorem so that it's very clear where it's coming from. And then, you know, again, this was my scratch work that I put arrows on to make the final proof. And I say, it looks like it's actually true. And so the above proof is my proof for that statement, since it's true. So step two is obviously to validate whatever your guess was. If you think it's true, you're going to have your proof. There it is. If you think it's false, you have to find a solid counterexample. So go to the second one um, that I gave you on the board sheet and see how it goes with that one. Do you have any questions on this one, by the way? All right. Good luck with the second one. 